Ruben Salazar was an award-winning journalist at the Los Angeles Times, who later became a columnist for the newspaper and a news director for Spanish language, KMEX TV. On August 29, 1970, Salazar was covering the National Chicano Moratorium against the Vietnam War in East Los Angeles. Deputies fired tear gas into the crowds after reports of looting, and officers and protesters clashed. Three people died, including Salazar, who was slain by a deputy who fired a tear gas missile into the Silver Dollar Bar, where the newsman had stopped to take a break. To this day, questions remain unanswered about Salazar's slain. The Times recently requested records from L.A. County Sheriff Lee Baca. On L.A.'s east side, artists are preparing a play called The Silver Dollar. They say Baca should open the Salazar files. My name is Abel Abel Salas. I'm 44 years old, and I think Sheriff Baca should definitely release those records regarding or relating to the suspicious slaying of journalist Ruben Salazar in um, 1970 on August 29th. I think Ruben represented the best that this community had ever produced. Uh, a lot of us still remember and revere what he did. Activists say that a 1970 coroner's inquest into the newsman slain never really investigated what happened that afternoon at the Silver Dollar. Filmmaker Jesus Salvador Trevino covered the 16-day inquest for KCET TV. There were two alternate theories or, or versions of what had happened and how Ruben Salazar had been killed. According to the sheriffs, um, there had been, um, someone had seen three individuals enter the Silver Dollar Bar um, with guns. And uh, this was the pretext on which the, the sheriffs, several sheriffs uh, squad cars had circled the um, the Silver Dollar Bar, and according to the sheriffs, they had called for people to come out. When no one came out, uh, they fired tear gas canisters into the Silver Dollar Bar, and it was one of these uh, canisters, a 12-inch flight right uh, missile that uh, hit uh, Salazar uh, and killed him. At the time, the uh, all other version of the story uh, was, and this was, you know, not only all the people in the bar, but also people across the street, they attested to the fact that there, in fact, were no people coming into the bar with guns, that, in fact, several people had tried to get out of the bar when the police, when the sheriff showed up, and the sheriff's officers ushered them back into the bar and wouldn't let them leave. So all of these, of course, uh, 40 years later, you look back on this, I remember at the time uh, reflecting and thinking that there are events that go down in history, um, events like the, the Scottsboro case, for example, and you think, how could that have taken place? How could such an injustice have taken place? Um, and I realized at the time, my gosh, this is one of those events. I'm living through this great injustice taking place, and I will look back later on in time, I will look back on this, and, and I will realize that we allowed it to happen and, and there was nothing we could do.